Hey, 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 it's W5HRO for uh, part three of the TS590 SG update. I bought the little SDR player uh, receiver to hook up to the Kenwood here, and uh, look, I have the pad adapter. Cool, man. I'm going to, uh, I guess I'm going to have to build some kind of a sh wood. I'm going to buy some wood probably at Home Depot in a weekend or two. And I'm going to build like a little hutch to fit here in the middle between the scope here and the R3, uh, what I mean R3, whatever, the uh, RME 6900. I'm probably going to take the RME 6900 speaker out of here for now because it's kind of in the way. I'm going to build a little hutch so I can put all this stuff and I can put the monitor on top. But uh, I just got a little wireless keyboard, and I'm going to buy a little wireless mouse to get rid of all the cables. But uh, it's working. And uh, what you have to do is you, you install the SDR Play software, the SDR, uh, I think it's called Uno software. And uh, you've got to also install OmniRig. It's another, another download, and you install that, and you can control the uh, radio. And you can, I can take my mouse and click on any place there on the, on the uh, display, on the spectrum analyzer part of it. And uh, it'll change it'll, the, the radio tracks with it, so it's pretty cool. It's kind of dark in here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, there's the uh, well, there's a little re the SDR receiver right there. And what I did was I uh, I bought a, a cable on Amazon that comes out of your DRV jack on the back of the Kenwood on the back of the SG, and you switch it to antenna out mode. And I bought a little 50 ohm 3 dB pad just to kind of help protect it. And I took it off, plugged it in. I don't see any difference in that change in the level on the dis on the on the uh, pan adapter display, so it works pretty good. But that's it. And then there's a, a USB cable that plugs into the computer. Sorry for it being so dark in here, but um, there's the little uh, the little p little square PC I bought with Windows 10 Pro pre-installed. So it's working pretty good. Um, and uh, I did buy the uh, little subwoofer amp, the little matching subwoofer amp for this. I just don't have the uh, subwoofer yet. Now, they're the same size as this, and I'll just put them side by side. But uh, I'm I'm just why it's just kind of why I want to build a little hutch. I want a compartment for those two things side by side or stacked on top of each other. Uh, I may decide to stack them. Then I'll put a subwoofer under the desk to get the better audio quality. But uh, look at this, man. It's pretty cool. You can, I can change frequencies here on the radio. See? What did I do? Oh, that's the steps. I got to figure out how to use this thing. Somehow I just clicked on something and I changed the step by mistake. See that? I don't know what I did. <laughs> I wasn't watching what I was doing and I changed the steps on it somehow. How do you put it back to the frequency readout? I'll figure it out. But look, it's got like a little S meter on it too, analog S meter. It's pretty wild. But uh, see, I can click go down here if I want. Let me see what I'm doing. It's, see, there's a foreign broadcast station. See, I just, I just changed frequencies. So the radio's now, it's tracking with it. It's pretty cool. I always wanted a pan adapter, and this is nice having the big display like this, because now whenever I'm on the bands, I can see where the activity is and go to it. That's kind of what I always wanted. So, uh... Yeah. <laughs> Works pretty good though. She just got the rainfall display below it. That's pretty cool. It's pretty wild. And see, there's a DBM meter here too. See that? 10 over 9. This thing's wild. This thing has tons of features. I mean, literally tons of features. But what you have to do on the Kenwood is you use a DRV jack on the output to the uh, the antenna input of that SDR receiver, and uh, you switch it to antenna mode. Do you get the little star here on the display? And uh, I think I can parallel. How do I get back to the desktop? I need to put an icon here so I can get stuff over the top of this. I. Uh, 
because everything's underneath it. I think I can run the uh, 590SG control program at the same time as this. I'm pretty sure I can. Let me, uh, let me exit out of this. Let me see if this will work. Did I click on it? Because I'm, I'm looking at the, uh, I'm looking at through my phone here. There we go. So see, antenna out. So basically, uh, if you go up here, where is that? If you go in the menu and you go down here to where it says, where is it? It's one of these things here. It's one of the, uh, I forget where it is, or was it somewhere else? You just have to select it, basically. Where is it? No, that's not it. That's not the one. I forget where it is, but there's a menu that comes up. I did it the other day. I should have prepared better, I guess, before I started to make this video, huh? But uh, it's pretty wild. Accessory, here, here we go. See, that's the normal drive out. Now, people use that, and they run it through an amplifier to get that, 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 that uh, MF frequency out, or LF frequency out. What's that, what's that, that, that new hand band they created way down low? If you, you, you actually, there's a harmonic when you're on tw uh, 20 meters, and you can amplify that with an amplifier, and you can actually work that, that other band way down low, believe it or not. So you put it on antenna output, and then see what it does is it changes that to uh, an antenna out. Now see if I go back, where was I here? Oh God, I have a menu. If I can figure out where I'm going, let me line the phone up. So if I put it back to drive out, look what happens. Now see, that, that says drive out again, see? So what you have to do is you have to uh, put it on antenna out to make it work properly. See, now it says antenna out. See, it changes the button, what it says. And basically, you want it to where the star is on, so that's antenna out. And when you transmit, it will not hurt the uh, SDR receiver the way it is. I did, I double-checked it, and I hooked up my uh, my watt meter and my antenna up to that DRV jack, and I transmitted to see if there was any power coming out, and there was absolutely nothing. Except you got that weak spur if you're on 20 meters for that one low, 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 low band. So uh, that's what you do. And I put that 3 dB pad in there just to, for extra protection, you know, in case I transmit in there. That that spur at, at certain levels, under certain conditions, is about zero dBm. And the SDR play receiver is designed to handle zero dBm continuous, with I think it said plus 10 dB intermittent. But I thought, let me just put a pad on there just to be safe. Not only that, that, that DRV jack on the back is looking at a solid 50 ohms now with that pad, so it's stable. That's the other reason. So I just got a small little 3 dB pad, which didn't affect the receiver or the, the pad adapter display in any way. But let me see now if I can actually keep this thing going and load here and load the uh, SDR Uno program. I don't think there's going to be a conflict in the port. Let me see. I just want to try it and see what happens. It takes a while for the whole thing to load and all the windows to pop up. And then you go up here and you hit play. Still working. So you can run both the SG Kenwood control program and this. You just lay the, just put, leave the control program in the background. And if you ever want to change to it, I think you just do this, see? And you can actually do more. So that, both of them work. You have, you have, you both will function, it looks like. I haven't fully tested both of them, but we'll see what happens. And you click, uh, you can minimize that and see it's, uh, hey, works great. Now what I do is I don't need this scan box here, this window. So I just kind of close this to these two boxes here. And I just drag this one over to flip the whole screen. That's pretty cool. Now see, I've got the display up here again. I don't know how it did that. Oh, that's the step. Because before I was able to change the frequency there, I guess that changes the step. Okay. 
But I've got a lot of learning to do. I haven't read all the uh, manual yet to figure out what everything, all the features do. But this thing is loaded, let me tell you. So that's it. This is the uh, Kenwood TS50SG, the new model with the SDR play hooked up and the uh, high-powered audio app. Now, by the way, my last video, when I turned up the audio app real loud... Now, you probably notice it's going to take a while for my voice to come back. What, what it did was, when I did it the last time, and like just now, it, it overloaded my phone, and my phone went into hard limited mode, you know, through the microphone on the phone. So you see how it's taking a while for my audio to come back up all the way? So it didn't sound as loud. If you were here in the shack, if you were here live with me, that thing about kills your eardrums. That's a little 100-watt mono amp. I, I kid you not. It has that little that new TI chip in it. That little box puts out 100 watts, and I'm not kidding. It's amazing. How could a box that tiny put out 100 watts of power? I could put stereo, a stereo speaker down here on the floor and it would drive it full blast. I'm not kidding. So these little things on Amazon, this noob sound or knob sound, they sound great. When I get the subwoofer, it's going to sound better. They come up. There's the little mini PC box I bought on Amazon. Let me see, which, uh, which one is it? Is it this one or is it this one? I'm trying to figure out which box the little amp is in. I haven't. It's this one, it's heavy. Let me show you here. It's, uh, let me see. See, there it is. There's the subwoofer model right there. It just says it's got a different model number, but it's the same size. See? NSO3G sub for the subwoofer. So you just have to get a you have to get a, a passive subwoofer, not an active subwoofer because you can't drive this into a an amplified subwoofer. You want a passive subwoofer. So I'll get the subwoofer here soon and I'll stick it down on the floor and I'm gonna have wonderful audio quality coming out of this uh, 590SG. And uh, don't get me wrong, I just, I wanted a modern receiver and I wanted to try to make it sound like a tube receiver as much as possible with the loud powered audio and the good sound. That should do it, plus I have this now. But this, this is always going to be my main transmitter here, of course, but uh, I'll use this for AM and I'll use this on SSB. I doubt if I'll ever use this on AM. Now, I might use it on the higher bands until I eventually get the, uh, I need, like I said, I need to change this out to a, uh, a, verb, a vacuum variable cap and when I do that I can get this working up to 17 meters because this exciter will go to 17 easy I just need to uh, it just it, I can't tune the RF amp it's it's too touchy with this uh, big big uh, air variable cap with those huge plates I gotta change it out to a vacuum variable when I do that then I can make this thing work all the way up to 17 and this is what I'll be using but this here will be my SSB station and maybe above 7, you know, for now I'll use it like on 20 and 17 maybe in 10 on AM until I get this thing fully finished so that's it for now this is W5HRO 73's